We just talked about how pressure varies in liquids. Um, now we're going to move on to gases. It's obvious when you dive into the bottom of a swimming pool that you can feel the pressure as you go down, even just a small amount, maybe four or five or six feet. You can certainly feel the pressure difference. But if you're um, in the air and you, say, get in an elevator and go up 10, 20 stories, you really can't feel the air, the air pressure difference once you're up at that higher elevation. So why is that? Well, if we talk about how pressure varies in gases over small distances, we can again use the same differential equation we used for fluids, because remember, fluids includes both liquids and gases. So pressure varies as a function of the specific weight of the fluid. Now, for water, the specific weight is close to 10,000 newtons per meter cubed. For air, it's, um, it's almost three magnitudes smaller than that. So as a result, the specific weight of gases are so low that um, pressure changes are insignificant over very small distances. So we consider the change in pressure to be zero um, in gases over small distances. Now over larger distances, once we talk about tens of thousands of feet, um, the, dis the change in pressure is apparent. Um, we're going to break this section up into two different areas. Uh, first we're going to talk about the stratosphere. The stratosphere is a layer of the atmosphere 6 to 30 miles high and temperature is constant throughout the stratosphere. We're going to start from the same differential equation and if you remember when we integrated this with a liquid this was a simple integration because gamma is constant in a liquid. We can assume it's incompressible. Gases clearly are compressible, so we can no longer assume that gamma remains constant. In fact, gamma varies with um, pressure and temperature by the ideal gas law, which we've already looked at. So if we get this in terms of gamma, gamma is rho g, we insert that into the ideal gas law, and we solve for gamma, we can then, we now have a, a relationship for gamma as a function of pressure and temperature. When we insert that into the differential equation, now we have an equation we can solve. We've got P, which varies, but G, R, and T are all constants. Remember, temperature is constant in this region. So this will take a few steps to solve. We simply sent, separate and integrate. Um, so we have pressure on one side and Z on the other side. Um, we can pull the constants out of the integral. And then, um, if you remember, the integral of 1 over p is the natural log of p. We rearrange and solve. And we come up with this equation for pressure at some height in the stratosphere. We can do the same sort of thing for the troposphere. This is the region of the atmosphere below the stratosphere, so up to 6 miles high. Um, in this region, temperature decreases with elevation. So we see changes in temperature over this elevation and um, this is the unstable region of the atmosphere where we get most of our weather. The weather um, doesn't, um, clouds and rain and storm and wind don't really um, persist up into the stratosphere. So in incidentally when you go on um, long plane flights uh, the planes like to cruise in the stratosphere so they they rise up to about 30,000 feet which is right at the region where the, the troposphere stops and they can get up above the clouds and the turbulent weather. Um, atmospheric scientists describe this decrease by this relationship where they start with the temperature at sea level and then the temperature decreases linearly as you go up in elevation. And that, that, decre that rate of decrease they term the lapse rate and it's defined by that uh, variable beta. So we start from the differential equation which we derived in the last problem. We can't integrate this one now because temperature varies with a function with respect to z. But we, we just described how that occurs so we can insert that in and now we have an equation we can integrate. Um, 
the only variables are p and z and everything else are constants. Uh, this one is a, little, is a bit more ugly to integrate so I'm going to skip the steps. It's in your textbook um, but this is the final equation for how pressure varies in the troposphere as a function of elevation. Okay, just to summarize pressure, I want to talk a little bit about scuba diving because it brings together a lot of the things we've talked about. <clears throat> when you learn how to scuba dive, you um, take note of seawater at 33 feet, 66 feet, and 99 feet. Seawater has a density a little bit higher than fresh water, 64 pounds per cubic foot. And if we want to calculate the pressure at those three different depths, we know how to do that now. Let's do this in gauge pressure, where the atmospheric pressure is set to zero. So then the pressure at 33 feet is just gamma H. When we do that, we come up with 14.7 PSI, or um, which is ex exactly equal to one atmosphere, which is why we, we picked 33 feet. Now it continues to increase linearly, right? So at 66 feet, we're at two atmospheres pressure. 33, 99 feet, we are at three atmospheres pressure. Um, so pressure increases linearly with depth, as we've talked about. If we talk about pressure in terms of absolute pressure now, um, all that means is we have a different um, datum. So now atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere, and at 33 feet we're at two atmospheres, and, and so on. Now one of the risks to... Um, scuba diving is how you manage your air in your lungs. Let's say you're down at 99 feet, you take a deep breath with your scuba gear, and something freaks you out and you rush to the surface. Keep in mind, 99 feet is not really that far. Um, so you take a deep breath, you hold, you hold your breath, and you swim to the surface. What's going to happen to your lungs when that happens? Um, to solve for this, we need to use Boyle's Law, which is PV equals a constant. So pressure times volume of a gas equals has to always be a constant. Now this is, um, and this is at constant temperature. And if you look at this carefully, you can see it's a, um, it's a simplification of the ideal gas law, which we've already talked about. So if PV is a constant, if at four atmospheres you've got one liter of air. At one atmosphere you're gonna have four liters of air in your lungs. So basically if you try to do this as a scuba diver your lungs are gonna explode and you're gonna die. Um, keep in mind you don't have to go down to 99 feet for this, for this to happen. At just 33 feet, which is, which is not deep at all, if you hold your breath and swim to the surface your lungs are gonna double in size and you will you will likely die as well. What actually happens is um, your lungs don't explode, but the first thing to go are the, the little capsules on the uh, lung wall where air is actually directly exchanged with your blood vessels. These are called the alveoli, and they start to burst when this happens. So this is one of the, one of the major risks to scuba diving. Um, there are lots of them, but it's... Um, it's actually not that dangerous. The only thing you have to do is continue to breathe. As long as you don't hold your breath, as long as you breathe out as you rush to the surface, you'll be just fine. And in fact, when you do a rapid ascent like that, you can breathe out pretty much the whole time without emptying your lungs. Because as the air expands in your lungs, it leaks out your mouth, and your lungs stay full for the whole time. It's, it's really, it's quite a strange sensation.